I can't believe there's enough theories in the Pokemon universe to warrant me making five different videos, so today I'll share with you my fifth and final batch of fascinating Pokemon theories. To start this theory, I'll have to share with you the official story of the legendary dogs. One day, Ho-Oh created the beast when the brass tower burned. They are said to embody the three events that happened to the tower. The lightning that struck the tower, the fire that burned it, and the winds and rain that put it out. It is unknown whether these three were already Suicune, Raikou, and Entei before they were revived, or whether Ho-Oh actually made them from three non-legendary Pokemon. So if other Pokemon could have formed the legendaries, which ones could it have possibly been? Well, some on the internet are claiming that the Eevee evolutions Flareon, Vaporeon, and Jolteon could be the answer. To back up this claim, we have to look at five key pieces of evidence. The first and most obvious is their types match. Secondly, all six of them have four legs and resemble either a dog or cat. Thirdly, each resembles its counter type. For example, the electric types have a sharp design, the fire types are furry, and the water types have a more smooth amphibious skin. The fourth reason is that they share similar stat distribution. Vaporeon and Suicune are both bulky water types, Flareon and Entei are both physical fire types, and Raikou and Jolteon are fast special sweepers. And the fifth and final piece of evidence is that the three original Eeveelutions are common in the Johoto region, so it wouldn't be strange if they were in the Brass Tower when these events happened. So what do you think? Did Ho-Oh create the legendary beasts out of the original Eeveelutions? Over the generations, some players have picked up on patterns in the Pokemon games. For one, all the Pokemon professors are named after trees. Don't believe me? Take a look for yourself. We have Professor Oak, Elm, Birch, Rowan, Juniper, and Sycamore. Another odd pattern in Pokemon games that slipped under a lot of people's radars are the meanings behind the names of cities in each generation. In Gen 1, the towns and cities have color-related names such as Saffron and Lavender. In Gen 2, they are plant-related like Newbark Town and Cherry Grove City. Gen 3 is a little more tricky to notice, but the names combine an organic and an inorganic word. Two examples of this being Petalburg and Lily Cove City. Gen 4 had to screw everything up by not having any recognizable patterns in the names, and Generation 5 brought this tradition back with all the cities and towns having cloud and weather related names, such as Icarus City which comes from Cirrus type clouds, and Nacreen City which is being taken from Nacreous clouds. A question that someone recently asked me was which Pokemon came first. After researching it a bit, I've come up with four different theories on which Pokemon should have this title. Some could say it's Bulbasaur because it's number one in the Pokédex. Others could say Rhydon because it's considered the first one created by Game Freak. While some could say it's Mew because it's known as the ancestor of all Pokémon. And finally, Arceus because the games refer to it as the original one. So what do you think should be considered the first Pokémon? Some people have been reasoning that the Pokemon Starmie and Deoxys are related. People say this because 1. They both are from outer space, 2. They both have gem-like centers that allow them to completely regenerate from near oblivion, as long as their core itself is not destroyed, and 3. Both are at least partially psychic type. What do you think? Could Starmie and Deoxys have come from the same planet? Another convincing Pokemon relationship theory has to do with the similarities between Kabutops and Genesect. The games tell us that both of them lived 300 million years ago, they both have the same body shape, and Genesect has been modified by Team Plasma. Because of these pieces of information, some people believe that Game Freak is implying that Team Plasma took a Kabutops and modified it with metal armor and a blaster on top of its head. For my final thought today, I'll let you decide if there's a similarity between Pokemon Red and Blue Silence Bridge music and Final Fantasy III's The Way to the Top song. So let's have a listen.
So that concludes my Pokemon Theory Month. And for everybody complaining that they don't like Pokemon, I apologize. And for the rest of you, I'm not saying that there will never be another Pokemon Theory video, but let's just give it a while. So thanks for watching.